Hear that? Calm and quiet. All seems to be in order. We should go in, just to be sure. You're relentless, aren't you? Fine. But wait here, please. Mother's certainly not in the mood for guests. What is up, YouTube? This is Antilles Gaming here, and today we are back on Witcher 3. So, right now, we are finally going to meet up with Dandelion at the Rosemary and Thyme. Because apparently he needs our help with something about, I don't know, I think something about getting his business all up and running. Uh-oh. I can't control what I inherit. But you can control yeah. what you do with it. I know. I know, which is exactly why I'm considering. Oh, you're always one considering. If it's not Don't one thing, it's another. Don't hit. Let me know when you finally decide. Also, just a small little thing. Uh, the owl. I don't know if you've played it before, the game before, but the owl will be very important later. It's not just a small thing of... Oh, look, he has an owl now. Trust me. It'll be a lot more important later in the game. But let's see what mess Dandelion has got himself into. And Dandelion, what the heck is with all the women? What was that about? She spat in my face. Or might as well have. Called me a whoremonger and a witless hack. Can you imagine? Wit is my forte. Gotta say, Priscilla's really growing on me. Save it. And why don't you save your pouting? Prove to her she's wrong. Exactly what I plan to do. I've always dreamed of having my own cabaret. A bit of paint and plaster in this place will do splendidly. Just one hitch. I need coin. So... If you happen to get a break between drowners and jigs, maybe you can help an old friend out. How much do you need? Maybe I can lend you the coin. Thank you, Geralt, but I refuse to take a single crown from you. You know what they say. Fastest way to lose a friend's to loan him some coin. But a favor? That's different. What kind of favor? I dated this girl once, Sophronia. That's a name if you can believe it. Has a merchant for a father, importer of spices from Zeracania. And Daddy Deer would never refuse his daughter Deer a thing. We can borrow the coin from her. Name rings a bell. Isn't this the woman you abandoned without saying a word? Stepped out for a bottle of wine, never to return? Knew I bought that wine for a reason. Long time ago, that. Been away a while, sure. Which is why I need... to draw on your authority. You've got some, you know. No matter what you might think. Fine. Tell me what you want. Got a feeling you've a plan all cooked up. Sophronia could still be holding a grudge after our unfortunate parting. But with a touch of help from you, I know she'll forgive me. And then give me that loan. What's this help entail? First of all, we need to borrow a dull sword from Madame Arena. One of her props. You know, the kind they use during performances? Get that, then meet me outside Sophronia's house. Let's say I agree and go see Madame Arena. What will you be doing in the meantime? Something I have to finish. But I promise I'll do it before you come back with the sword. Then I'll tell you the rest. Fine, but... Geralt, 
the only butts in this plan will be the ones filling my seats. It'll work, you'll see. Get the sword from Madame Arena and meet me outside Sophronia's at sunset. Old man Newman left me a gift last time. Oh boy, Dandelion. Urbor. <sighs> What's he schemed up this time? Geralt, if we know Dandelion, we both know that whatever he schemed up, it is n -n nothing good. I'll lawyer wherever I want. Free city. Ah, so good to see you. You and Dudu know each other well? Yes, though he's never told me much about himself. He was a merchant once? Mm hmm. Dudu always had a penchant for enterprise. Probably too honest to succeed in Novigrad, though. Precisely. I've told him countless times that no matter how many times he changes his appearance, the good in him will always emerge. Bloodthirsty tyrants and vicious assassins. He played them so poorly. That must be why. Whereas he always made for an excellent trusted servant or ghost of the old king. Got a request. Need to borrow one of your props. One of the swords you use for stage battles. My. Whatever do you need that for? I don't know, but Dandelion claims it's essential. Oh, yes. I suspected Master Dandelion might have a hand in this. I certainly hope you don't aim to compete with me. Well. Thanks. I'll try not to damage it. So long. <sighs> and now that I have the sword, can I finally beat some sense into Dandelion? I mean, I will admit, Dandelion, his plans are stupid, but his plans get results. Like, he... He may not be the sharpest person in the... anything. But... Somehow, things have a way of working out for him. Like the whole... Him ending up in prison, and then... Us uh, saving him... Again... Finally made it. Listen, here's the plan. Sophronia loves adventure-filled romance novels. I can be a hero in her eyes if I can just save her from a bandit. I'll have her eating out of my hand, and there's no way she'll begrudge me that loan. Want me to be the bandit? Knew you'd see the sense in it right away. Are you serious? That's your brilliant plan? I never called it brilliant, but any kind of plan is better than none. Written your lines already. You've written what? So you know what to say during the performance. Here, Andromask, put it on. Sophronia can't recognize you. But... No time. Sophronia's coming. Stick to the plan. We'll meet at the Rosemary in the morning. Stop right there. What? What is this? Help! Save me! Not your lucky day, miss. Hand me your purse. Now. Not so fast. Drop your sword, scoundrel. This is your first and last warning. Dandelion! Tis I! Though the scum of the city call me the Crimson Avenger. No, not the Crimson Avenger. Silence, vermin! You shall regret the day you were born. Ah! Oh, guard. <laughs> uh, you're better than I thought. <laughs> <sighs> the things I do for friends. The Crimson Avenger triumphs again. My hair. 
Are you well? One blow struck true. Another scar from my collection. Come inside. I shall bandage you up. Be gone, vile bandit, or the Crimson Avenger will beat you senseless! Out of curiosity, can I light his ass on fire for making me have to go through that? Yeah, I could have beaten him and all that and all, but... It's a favor for a friend, so I figured, well, why not? Oh. There's been a misunderstanding. You're here too early. We agreed to meet today. So we've come today. Supplies are all hauled in and the crew's raring to work. We'll start just as soon as our lovely directress gets round to deciding on the decoration. But Dandelion doesn't even have the coin to pay you. Turns out he does now, or soon will. At any rate, he's working on it. See? It's all peachy. So will you finally decide what style you want for this interior? Why are you asking me? Well, the lovely lady seems to be having a hard time deciding. And Master Dandelion said he was torn between boudoir style and theater decor. But that he'd let us know just as soon as we arrived. Now we're here, but no decision's been made. And the lady's horribly surprised she's to choose. <laughs> Though apparently this whole renovation's for her sake. For me? Well, it's not for me. Now, would you please decide where I bust a vessel? I've no idea what Dandelion would like. Geralt, you've known him longer. Say something. Sure, I've known him longer, but he's never so much as changed his socks for me. Never mind commissioning a full-blown renovation. He's doing this for you, clearly. You should decide. I associate boudoirs with a feminine elegance that also has an edge. Claws, you might say. That fits a cabaret perfectly. A wonderful choice it is. At last. Gentlemen, you're done lollygagging. Get to work. Well, well. Guess this cabaret's the real thing. Ever since Dandelion inherited this place, he's talked about it constantly. I just never expected him to take action. And so quickly. Who knows? Might even settle down now. He'll have to keep an eye on the business. Who would have known? Despite what people say about him, Dandelion approaches life very rationally. We talking about the same dandelion? Man who loses a fortune worth half of Novigrad in one night? Dandelion can also be responsible. He always pays anyone who works for him on time, and he's never missed a performance. Sure hope your opening won't be the first. He's still not here. Well, he said as soon as he got the coin, he'd go see Polly, our choreographer. She's missed the last few rehearsals. I certainly hope he's not gotten into trouble. Anything's possible with Dandelion. Let me see if I can't find him. Hero, positively divine performance. You make a splendid mama. Hello, my friend. Oh, is that dimerinium on you? I wonder why you have Dimerinian on an owl. I'm not gonna say... I'm not gonna spoil anything, but... Just a little hint. Who do we know... Who c can turn it into an owl? What's the ruckus about? 
Holly and her half-brained fiance. They're fighting. She's the only one in this town who knows anything about choreography, and that lummox won't let her work for me. Oh, oh, hold on. What are you doing here? We were going to meet at the Rosemary. We were, but you didn't show. Priscilla started to worry, so I came to see how you were doing. Priscilla started worrying about me? That's so nice. Less for her than for you, I'm sure. So let's get back. Did you not hear what's going on in there? We've got to help Polly. Why do beautiful women always end up with such dicks? No idea. Stand back. I'll break the door down. Wait! Do we have to destroy her house? She keeps a spare key around here somewhere. How would you know she keeps a spare key around here? It's not as if we started working together yesterday. Before Polly joined forces with Hubio... You'd visit her? Often? I'd hide out here while Priscilla and Polly rehearsed at the Rosemary in Time. They worked on the dance numbers I, I composed. So, Polly's not one of your... I never mix business and pleasure. The one exception being Priscilla. Who you were just saying is worried about us. So enough of the chatter, and start looking. Fine. Let's find the key. Damn it. Now where would she leave? Why is your hair so grey, darling? Not here. Maybe not a good idea to hide that close to the door. Sorry, I thought I had my mic on. Yes, the door's open. Come on. Whoa, what the devil's this? Get out of my ass. Watch it and leave the woman alone. What the f She's my betrothed. But I'm not your property. I love her. I'll not let her sway her ass in his brothel. Whoa, slow down there a minute. This is clearly one gigantic misunderstanding. One I can clear up in the blink of an eye. Shove your excuses up your ass. Shut off, or I'll split your skull. My friend asked you nicely. So please be courteous in return and hear him out, or we'll settle this another way. All right, talk. Hubio, right? Polly's told me so much about you. She said you're erudite and have an open mind. You said that? Well, there's a truth to it. My mind's the open salt, but its open saltedness ends when my betrothed starts wagging her ass around brothels. Get out of here, both of yous. Polly's not going anywhere. Let him finish. There's no brothel involved. You see, friend, Geralt just hit the nail on the head. For what you have there is the old publicity placard. Old? Very. From a time when my establishment was under different management. I, however, would never let any indecency take place in my cabaret. My very reputation precludes it. So, what's all this about? Your betrothed is a first-class artiste, and I want to offer her a position worthy of her talents. She's to be my choreographer, and that in turn means she'll receive a share of the proceeds from every performance she choreographs. You mean to say... coin? And fame. No flirting required. You have my word. Oh. Suppose... in that case... I knew you'd agree. It's settled then. See you at the Rosemary, Polly. Well, I'm off. I'll catch up to you. Whew. 
Never expected that to go so well. You handled it well, Dandelion. Man was body in your hands once you called him erudite. In negotiation, as in combat, the key is to find your opponent's weak spot and exploit it to the hilt. So, time to head back? I've still got to stop by Rotlix. Commissioned some new placards from him a while ago, but Hubio came across the old version. Plowing artists got some serious explaining to do. Who's Rotlick? Never heard of him? Hank Rotlick, famous portrait artist? Commissioned a portrait artist to paint your placards? Henry's an old friend, needed the coin. And I decided we needed new placards to promote the opening performance. Seats won't fill themselves, you know. I'll go see Rotlick. You head back to the Rosemary, or Priscilla will have my head. Really? You'd go? No, said that for the hell of it. Tell me where he lives. Portside. See you soon. <sighs> Don't worry, we will be getting to that quest. Cause I do want I do seriously want to do that. In fact, I think next episode I think next episode I'll start that quest, but the thing that I'm worried about is I'm going to start it and then there's going to be parts that are going to be too high level for it because there are some parts that are pretty high level. Well, not like extremely high level, but high enough that it'll give me problems. I don't know, I'll... I'll see how this goes. How about that? Oh boy. Looking for Rodlick. You ain't alone. Damn halfling's in debt to half the city. But I'm here to scrape mine for the carcasses pit clean. There's not enough for everyone, so bugger off! Feeding time's first come, first served. Take what you want. I'm just here for some placards. You deaf. Didn't you hear me? This is all mine now. Fuck off, freak. <sighs> and here I thought we'd resolve this peacefully. Carol, you should know by now, it's never going to end peacefully with people in this city. Really? I... Really? I can't use signs on them? Okay, now it's just you and me. Come on! Finish him! Tell me what you want, damn it! Placards. There ain't no plowing placards here! And Rodlick, where's he? Same place as always. Vagal Bud Estate. Losing his last crowns at the races! See? Wasn't that easy. Could have said so right away. Aww. I gotta go way over there. Dandelion, you owe me. Seriously though, Dandelion? After all this, he owes me big time. Gods and men, dumb struck with all. Seems you're a considerable sum in the red. You Rotlick? Henri Rotlick? 
Artist, painter, debtor, and martyr to my art. At your service. Dandelion sent me. Oh, yes. You tell him his placards are done and safely hidden away. Yet, alas, I cannot fetch them, as a group of angry creditors has seized my home. Think I might have run into one of them. Then you know my predicament. And now, Count de Louverton has offered me the chance to win it all back. I'm to wager on a race. Generous. Not just anybody could afford to do that. De Louverton is not just anybody. He's Duke Sam's youngest son. Sam of the well-known family of gem dealers. One debt more or less makes little difference to him. What's there to worry about? This is your chance to settle up, get a clean slate. We've had a spell of bad luck lately. Should I agree to De Louverton's offer and lose, I shall be in bondage to him for all time. Let's do this. I'll enter the race. You'll bet on me, win, pay your debts, then give me the placards. You are that good a rider? Far from the worst. Go tell the Count you accept his offer. <clears throat> Washed your hair lately. Okay, so I decided on this route to enter the race. Because if I would have just paid, then that would have just been... I have a feeling that this episode probably isn't going to have a lot of action. So I figured, eh, why not do a race? Plus, with the race, I I haven't really done a race in a while since uh, a few episodes ago, actually. Plus, Roach, Roach hasn't been in a race in a while, so figured, why not? I might take the uh, Griffin head off of... Off though, like if it's not really doing anything to to help me, then I might take it off. Thank you. I I never expected this. May I ask to what I owe this generosity? Let's just say I like to do a good deed from time to time. Can we get those placards now? I'll bring them to the Rosemary in time, just as soon as I settle my obligations. Fine. See you there. I mean, seriously, look at how much money I have. I could have easily paid it off, but... Where's the fun in doing that? Figured, you know, we haven't been in an actual race in a while, so why not do a race? But anyway, let's go see what Dandelion, if I can, there we go. Let's go see if Dandelion has anything else for us to do. Knowing him, he'll probably need the blood of a king. Looks like they had their grand opening without me. Ooh. This place does clean up nice. Looks like rain. No, it looks like Priscilla. Well, well. See, the crew's been hard at work. Not bad. No. No, not all. But I'd imagine something more, you know, more theatrical. Don't you like it? But I thought a boudoir would be right in line with your tastes. Oh, you chose it. Well, I'm not saying it's bad. Just different. Not exactly what I'd envisaged. You know, now that I think about it, you're absolutely right. A boudoir is the perfect setting for a cabaret. What about Rotlick? Did you get the placards? Rotlick said he'd bring them on his own. Should be here soon. Great! The best way I can think of to promote the chameleon. Mm. 
never mentioned wanting to change the name. Rosemary and Thyme wasn't all bad, but it conjured images of Temerian cuisine served by waitresses in peasant garb. Chameleon's a lot better for a cabaret, apart from which it emphasizes that the place has undergone a transformation. Just a better ring to it all round. What about choreography? Prepared anything special for the opening? We haven't. But Polly has. She's priceless. Came in and brought the girls in line before I could say knickers. Premier will have the audience on their feet, on their knees, both at the same time. Guess everything's ready. So when's the opening? Soon. We start our dress rehearsal in an hour. I just need to knit back home for my dress. Thanks for everything. Don't mention it. Seems my cabaret dreams are about to come true. So, around to celebrate? I'm buying. Why not? That's my boy. The foreman mentioned he saw you and Priscilla talking. He saw right. And... She say anything about me? She said something that made me think she's not entirely normal. What? That you're responsible, got your feet planted firmly on the ground. You're pulling my leg. Not this time. One thing's eating me. How do you manage to get the loan from Sophronia? Oh, wasn't easy. She got so excited about our performance, I had to read to her for four hours. Four hours from the cloak and the dagger. You mean you didn't? Are you crazy? Who do you think I am? She's late, of course. She knew how important this night was to me. Of course she did. Probably just making herself gorgeous. Takes time. So it's true. A woman's vanity knows no bounds. <laughs> Master Dandelion! Priscilla! She's... What? Speak, man! She's badly, uh, been attacked. They, they took her to Vulmerius Hospital. Attacked? She's hurt? Geralt! Come with me, please. Of course, let's go. Gods. Priscilla. Is she gonna live? Well, I'd say that's certain. Her condition's critical but stable. I beg your pardon, but you are a relative? R relative? No, a friend. A very close friend. Dandelion, correct? She uttered the name in her few moments of lucidity. I am Joachim von Graz, head of surgery. Until recently, a lecturer at Oxenfurt Academy. Enough of the courtesies. What are her injuries, besides her eye? A concussion, cranial swelling, incision into her larynx, and scalding inside the throat and esophagus. Clearly someone forced her to imbibe a caustic fluid. Who could have done this? That I do not know. I do, however, know she is not the perpetrator's first victim. How can you know that? I've seen wounds like this. They're not the kind one would forget, don't you agree? In fact, just this week a corpse turned up in the morgue with similar injuries. And no heart. No heart? You mean that might have happened to Priscilla? Is someone looking into this? This is Novigrad. Only the innocent burn here. Geralt, I know I owe you a hundred times over, but I need to ask you another favor. Find the bastard who did this. Find him. And kill him. Don't need any convincing. Come on, Dandelion. Let's think about what we can do. I... I would suggest examining the previous victim's corpse. It has yet to be autopsied. Doing so could very well provide some clues. No need to look astonished, gentlemen. As a surgeon, I know the importance of preventive medicine. 
Rather than wait for this maniac to strike again, I'd prefer to excise him. Not unlike a tumor. Great analogy, but this tumor is not gonna sit there, wait to be excised. Appreciate the help, but I doubt you know what you're getting yourself into. I know perfectly well, and I assure you I can take care of myself. Easy assurance to make, harder to back up. Especially if you've spent your whole life wielding a scalpel, not a sword. Look at this scar. Don't be shy. Any idea what leaves such a mark? A flail. Morningstar, maybe. What do you think? A blow sustained at the operating table? No. Let me repeat, I know what I'm doing, and I wish to help. Think they'll let me into the morgue? By the main entrance, certainly not. But you can also get inside through the sewers. The sewers? Travel them often, Doctor? As often as required for, uh, the pursuit of preventive medicine. Alternative treatments. Aggressive ones, I'm guessing. Interesting. We can discuss this en route. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Ready and intrigued. I'll get whoever did this, Dandelion. Even if it's Hierarch Hemelfart himself. Thanks. You lead. So, preventive medicine you practice in the sewers. What's that about? Think. Sewing up drowner victims can grow awfully tight. Hear that? Been hearing it for a while. Draw your weapon. Wait a minute. D <clears throat> That's... I still had that stupid training sword on. Excellent fool. Come on. I thought something looked weird about it. I thought something looked weird about my primary steel sword. Yeah, I saw that stupid dummy sword from, uh, whenever I helped Dandelion. Got more up ahead. Surely you understand what a terrible blow that would be to a Trobritz. Enough to strip her of the will to live. Any remedy for that? I fear only your friend Dandelion can be of help on that count. With this quest, if you don't do it exactly right, you can't find the real culprit. So I'm going to make sure that I find the real culprit because Priscilla, she does not deserve what happened to her. Take the ladder. She has done nothing wrong and she is a good person. Did you get your head out of my ass? The place. Come, the quicker we take care of this, the better. Why? Got somewhere to be? Someone might disturb us. The coroner, for example. Or Reverend Nathaniel Pastodi. Very well. We seek the corpse of a dwarven woodcarver. Too tall. Female. Is there another room?
Yep, definitely looks like him. Poor guy. Calluses on the fingers, sawdust in the beard, clothes sticky with sap. Must be our dwarf. Excellent. I trust you don't grow weak in the knees at the sight of blood? Not a bit. Start the autopsy. Where? His genitals. We ought to inspect those. I sincerely doubt they bear any relation to the matter. We'll see. Pull down his trousers and... shit. Uh, syphilis, actually. Early stages. No sign of diffusion. Think there could be a connection? Only as the killer's potential motivation. His genitals. We ought to inspect those. I see. You clearly find gonads fascinating. I fear I don't share your passion. Let's focus on other parts of his anatomy, shall we? Let's look at his head. Hair smells like it's burnt. Like he was in a fire. Notice anything else? That his eyes have been scooped out, for instance? Those burn marks I see in his eye sockets. Yes, and some grey dust. Ash, it seems. Very fine. Murderer gouged out his eyes, then put burning coals in the sockets. So it seems. Looking at the wounds, it appears our woodcarver was still alive when it happened. Let's examine the mouth. Burns. Blisters. Just like Priscilla's. See this? Incision made into the voice box. Indeed. So thin as to be nearly unnotable. A small, extremely sharp instrument. Scalpel. And but why? The wound is too small to bleed. And there are signs of swelling. The murderer... I believe he performed a tracheotomy. So the victim wouldn't die too soon. Let's examine his torso. What have we here? Deep wound on the left side of his rib cage, and a scar the length of his stomach. Let's examine the chest wound. Yeah, heart carved out, wound cauterized. Wait a minute, there's something else. An egg from an amphibian. A salamander? Scorched but intact. I attended some lectures in herpetology as a student. Afraid I don't recall any amphibians that would lay eggs in corpses. So either Professor Cochrane was deeply mistaken, or this is our murderer's doing. Look at the scar. Wounds long and thin. An incision. But the edges are ragged. Means nothing. Look, no swelling, no bruises. An old injury, perhaps uh, an accident in the workplace. Open the abdominal cavity. Uh, due warning, it will stink of rot. Once fought a zoogle up to my waist in sewage, so I doubt... Wait. Smells not rot. Formaldehyde. A medical novelty. Heavily diluted, it's remarkable at preserving organic tissue. In stronger proportions, it's more destructive than acid. Explains why there's no smell of decay, and why his throat scalded. Look at his hands. These welts. Rope burns, right? He was tied up. I'd expect so. No one could sit through such torture unless bound. Speaking from experience? Yes, that of a victim. Spent a year in the dungeons of Tretagore. Long story. Some other time, maybe. See the callus? Our dwarf wore a ring, but someone took it off him.
See anything interesting on his legs? His right foot. The ankle swollen. Toenails broken. He clearly kicked something very hard. Right before he kicked the bucket. Doesn't strike me as the right time for jokes. No apologies. We surgeons... We've a different sensibility. Mm-hmm. And a different sense of humor. All right. Think I know enough. Enlighten me, please. Because I've still no notion what this is about. What the motive might have been. It's some kind of sick ritual. You saw it. Burns in the eye sockets. Cavity where the heart should be. Scalding liquid. All centering on warmth, heat, fire. A fire eternal. It's a lead worth following. Any idea what his name was? Fabian Meyer. And I'm Hubert Reich, the coroner. I've come to perform the autopsy. But I see you've done it for me, Joachim. As always, you interfere where you're neither needed nor wanted. Drag others into trouble in the process. Who is this? A student. Lifelong learner. Got a couple questions for you. Very well, speak. But be quick. Reverend Nathaniel has come by for an inspection. He'll be here shortly. You old friends? Hubert taught me the rudiments of medicine. Long ago. And not very well. You've still not mastered certain basic principles. For example, that a doctor's role is to treat the ill, not save the world. You've not changed a bit. A compliment? No, a statement of fact. Thirty years, and you've not changed a bit. Woodcarver's body. Where was it found? It's important. Plan to investigate? Exciting. He died in his workshop south of the Market Square, just beside the gate to Far Corners. That poor Trebirates was attacked there. City's a buzz about it. But the woodcarver, Eustace the corpse collector, brought us the body. You should speak to him. Saw him just around the corner, near... Oh, greetings, your reverence. Who are these people? I believe I made it clear no one's to be allowed in, under any circumstances. You did, but they're friends of the deceased. Here to collect the body. Out of the question. Show them out at once. As your reverence wishes. Gentlemen, follow me. You shall leave via another route. Why do you cover for us? I was covering my own arse. If Reverend Nathaniel had learned someone had entered the morgue, then cut open a corpse without his permission, I'd be in deep trouble. But you didn't give that a thought, did you, Joachim? As ever. Well, while I don't approve of your willfulness, I also wish to see this murderer hang. So, should I learn anything new related to this case? I will let you know. Hmm. Thank you. Nathaniel. Who is he? A scoundrel. A rogue. Like every man who wears the robes of the Eternal Fire. Most are scoundrels before they ever put on the robes. True in his case as well. Before he donned the frock, Nathaniel was a torturer. Delighted especially in torturing women. Later, Hierarch Hemelfart appointed him to oversee the morgue. He deals with the Temple Guard, supervises cremations, conducts funeral masses in the Temple on the Isle, and so forth. Hmm. Dream job. Might have told me you know the coroner. We could have skipped the trip through the sewers. I know him, thus I avoid him. I've said enough on the subject. Don't aim to press you. Thank you. I've nothing to hide. It's just an old wound. Unhealed as yet. What will you do now? Plenty of leads. Woodcarver's workshop, the corpse collector who found him, alley where Priscilla was attacked. Got work to do. As do I. At the hospital. I must return there. But I shall keep my fingers crossed. And I'll keep my eye on you. Oh. 
Okay, they said that the corpse collector is right around the corner. You know. Fourth sense, I think it is. You bring Fabian Meyer's body to the morgue. Fabian. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> no ice, no art. Uh, one of them, right? No purse neither, as I recall. One of them? So there have been other bodies like that? <laughs> sure have. Beggars. Street urchins and street walkers. One went so portly, I had to cut her into pieces to fit her in me wheelbarrow. Slippery sow, they called her, when I counted her. Some things are best left unsaid. What happened to the pieces? What do you mean? Reverend Nathaniel ordered them burned. Every last one. Oh, shame that was. Shame? Why? Actually, never mind. Another thing that's best left unsaid. You search Fabian's body? Well, I uh, cast an eye in his pockets, <laughs> made sure nothing went to waste. I call a spade a spade. You rob corpses. And I call a prick a prick. It's none of your fucking concern. What, are you a tax collector? Peace off, mutant. Talk. what did you find on him? I, oh, I had you wish. Triflings, baubles, glass beaded wing, handful of coins, and a letter. Look, vellum, quality parchment, that. <laughs> I wipe off the right inner sell it as new. That's human skin. Priscilla, next victim's name. If you'd given this to the right person, she might not have been hurt. <laughs> what the fuck do I care what happens to some Priscilla? We short of wenches in this town. What was that for? For everything. Oh, trust me, I've regretted a lot of things playing this game. That easiest decision I've ever made. He takes money from dead people because, you know, the family already doesn't have enough stuff to worry about. And now. And now he's saying that. Oh, who cares about Priscilla? I mean. So what? She died. Who cares? If it was up to me, I would have done a lot worse than just punch him. But Geralt does have those little uh, spikes on his gloves. So, let's just say that the punch definitely hurt. This time of year. Dave. How am I to know? Watch Jim, see what he does. The heck is this about? What? Lost your nerve? Okay, seriously, what? I have no idea what's going on here. Okay, did I do something? Like, did, did I accidentally bump one of them when I came in or something? Gotta get around him. Not too late to surrender. Okay, I don't know what this is about, but bring it on, I guess. Huh. <sighs> gonna hurt you. What are you doing here? Getting vengeance. Well, why are you staring? 
Have you not heard killers always return to the scene of their crime? Me and my brothers are waiting here to give him a warm welcome for Priscilla. Almost did her in the whole sun. I know. Here to look for clues and find anyone who might know something. Fear I can't help you much. But I can tell you what I know. You and Priscilla friends? Friends? Nah. But she saw more than a stupid whore in me. Treated me with respect. It mattered. I was looking to give up whoring. Pick up a decent trade. But none would take me. Not as a washerwoman, nor a servant, nor a cook. Felt like a leper, I did. But Priscilla, she was different. Agreed to put me in her play, you see. Lots of the other actors, they were afraid on account of her jesting about the eternal fire. Whistling Wendy on stage, can you imagine it? Well, dream's gone now. I'm back to work in street corners. Sorry to hear that. You could do worse as work goes. Or so I tell myself. Priscilla wasn't the sole victim. You aware of that? Oh, dearie. Of course I was. This didn't start yesterday. Others have died like this before. Beggars, street girls, orphans. But who'd have a drama concern about them? Human rubbish. It's what the guards call us. Recall any names? They didn't have proper ones. Baldy, curly, buns. That's what folk called them. No friends, no families. Their bodies were burned long ago. Take care now. I gotta look around some more. Appreciate it if you didn't disturb me. Naturally. We'll stand aside, Biv. But do tell us if you find anything else here. Oh, the heads with you. Awful pile. Oh, you scared. Well, look, I didn't want to attack you. You attack me! So I don't want to hear it. Man's footprint. The murderers, maybe. Wait on his heel. Took a step back. Murderer fled before the guards arrived. Ran this way. Trail ends here. Strange. Even I couldn't jump this wall. Something's telling me the murderer is not a normal thing. I know that smell. Formaldehyde. Like something's telling me that this murderer... He's not just... A... I don't think it's a person. Well, I... I think it's a person, but not a normal person. Because it's, it's like Geralt said, no normal person could have jumped that wall. Like, just look at how high that wall is. There's no way someone could have jumped it. And if guards were coming, then there's no way he would have been able... Oi, Witcher! Coroner wants to see you. Been another victim. Told me to say the main door will be open for you. You are to come as soon as you can. Okay, we're gonna go there after. First, we need to go check the woodcarver area. What is this? Anyone home? Be gone, or I'll set me hands on you. Molly, Striga, come! Relax, I'm here about Fabian Meyer, looking for his killer. That's altogether different. Sit your stupid much, lay down. Morning. Morning. Slowly now, lest they bite you. Charming as beasts go. You daft? Even I'm scared of them. But better barking dog than an evil man at your door. Got someone particular in mind? Sure as shite. Bugger who did Fabian in. Soon as they'd hauled his corpse off, I ran to a mate who raised his fighting dogs. Bought these two mutts. Cost me a chunk of change. But a sleep sound at least. So who might you be? The Steph's brother. Gus is the name. We ran a workshop together. Meyer and Meyer. Hmm. 
What'll it be now? Just mire? Name it. I'll be closing it down now. As soon as I find a buyer for this shack, I'll head on to Mahakam. Be near my family or what's left of it. So, what do you want to know? What can I tell you about Fabian? Tell me what you know about the murder, in order, in detail. It was like this. Had some work in Oxenfurt, and I was coming home. Saw a plume of smoke rising over the city. Thought to myself, blast it, gonna miss him burn another hag. But the smoke wasn't coming from Hyrax Square. It was coming from here. See the soot stains? That's where they burned our sculptures. Folk gathered round the blaze and found Fabian here beside it. They'd already loaded him on the cart by the time I arrived. Talk to your neighbours. They see anything suspicious beforehand, hear anything? Claimed not to. But even if they had, they'd not have helped. In Novigrad, folk give bleeding orphans in the street a wide berth so as not to stain their poor lanes. What do they care about some dwarf? Your brother have any enemies? Anyone dislike him? Threaten him, maybe? Nay. It was Fabian who threatened this one last. Oh, you were a good dwarf, a craftsman like no other. But you were an incorrigible whoremonger as well. Whenever we put a bit of coin aside, I'd say, let's buy some tools, quality timber. No, he grabbed the purse and head out whoring. Took to following one in particular. He'd say, it's all your fault, dirty bitch, human dish rag, and other obscenities. Don't rightly know what that was about. Maybe he was in love with her. Know where I can find her, this dish rag? City cemetery. She died a few days back, quietly in her sleep. Her pawn said a fever took her. Fine. We've talked enough. Need to look around. Be my guest. Just beware of the dogs. They got some big dogs in this game. Like... Those dogs are freaking huge. It's just a... Yeah, yeah. I already know about that. Statues of the old gods. Nothing but women. Shapely ones. Blood stains. That's where Fabian lay when they found him. Hmm. Someone dragged something across the floor. More dragged it from one wall to the other, repeatedly. Mind if I go inside the workshop? It's not even peeked inside since since they found Fabian. But I'll open it for you if you want. I guess Geralt sometimes has to Problems with doors too. More blood stains, but not near enough to say he bled to death. Unless somebody got rid of the blood, left a few stains behind. Formaldehyde. Doubt Fabian used it. Furniture got knocked over. This looks like it was kicked. Kicked. Like when he, like when he said that he kicked something hard. Oh. Come on, girl. Okay, fine, I'll back up. Eyes. Humanoid. Completely rotten. Ugh. So, the, the guy just left. Ugh. And it's sad, like, the, there are some sick people in the world, like, even today. Like, there are some... Ugh. Okay, if you're trying to be a Skyrim guard, it's not gonna work, dude. Geralt, right? I'm glad you're here. 
held off on the autopsy till you arrived. Nice of you, especially given you didn't seem pleased about my previous visit. Because you came unannounced and in unfortunate company. I also had Reverend Nathaniel to contend with. Our spiritual caretaker has left the city on some important matter. And I know who you are, what drives you. I'm more than happy to aid your investigation. By the way, you and Von Gratz don't exactly get along. Why is that? I had him sent to prison. You see, Joachim led the student protests in 1242. A senseless and brutal revolt. People were dying, Witcher. Those who rejected liberty, equality, and fraternity would be found in the gutter come morning. Their throats slit from ear to ear with surgical precision. Joachim had been my favorite student, but... Alas, I had to do something. So I reported him. Then I left the university and found work in the morgue, where none care about my past. Whereas Joachim... Oh, fate's ironies. Years later, he was appointed head of the very ward I had founded. How old's Von Gratz? Fifty? Sixty? Fifty-three, I believe. Why do you ask? You look a little young to have been his teacher. Not surprising. For years, I've lived in the cold and dark, breathing the vapors of embalming fluids. In short, working with corpses extends one's life. Amusing, is it not? Who's the victim this time? Joris Aquinas, a lecturer in theology at Oxenfurt Academy. Found this morning at his home on a catafalque made of his books. Any titles in particular? It seems all the tomes dealt with the eternal fire. Treaties critical of the faith's doctrines. Yeah, mortal sin in Novigrad. Not fond of Nathaniel? Very few people are. He's cruel and capricious. He stormed in here once, grabbed a scalpel I was sterilizing over a burner, sliced my back with it to the bone, because I had forgotten to lock the storeroom. Hard to be fond of someone like that, wouldn't you agree? Let's start. Gladly. The wounds conform to the killer's modus operandi. The victim was bound and forced to drink formaldehyde. Next, the killer removed the eyes, placed burning coals in the sockets, then opened the rib cage and... What's this? A parchment? Made of human skin. A message from the murderer. The name of his next victim. Patricia Vagelbud. Do you know her? Yes. He even went to her estate once with... Gotta find her. Now. Shit. Come on. Oh boy. Wait. Till next time, Master. He said that the that Nathaniel was out on business. He said that he left the city to go on business. But no, 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 that. I get that they said that Nathaniel left the city on business. So naturally. If Roach would go. go. Thank you, Roach. So, naturally, it would seem as though he's the killer. But here's the thing. We have that wall that... We had that wall that the killer clearly jumped over. Nathaniel, if he's a normal person, there's no way he could... He could have done that. But if Nathaniel is the killer, then... What exactly is he? Because he is clearly... The killer is clearly not human. I mean, it seems like it would be him. I mean, the whole... Way that they're being killed with... With surgical... Accuracy? I don't know. 
Need to talk to Patricia Vagelbud. You think any bum off the street can... Her life's in danger. Let me in or have her blood on your hands. If you thought this up, and I'll let you in, I'll throw my ass out the door. Always thought a guard was supposed to protect his charge, not his ass. So be it. I'll take you to Lady Vagelbud. Just no trickery. Understand? Oh, Geralt. What a pleasant surprise. Not pleasant at all. I gotta see your mother. life's in danger. In danger? Come now. I saw Mother this morning. She seemed sad, true, but in perfect health. I'm hunting a serial killer, and I've got reason to believe your mother will be his next victim. Why, even if it's true, our guards... He's exceptionally cruel when he kills, tortures his victims, cuts out their hearts. So let's see how she is, just in case. I find this all very hard to believe, but you appear to be quite serious. Please, follow me. A fire fit for Bellatane, except it's the wrong time of year. I mentioned Mother seems sad. Do you remember? In fact, she's in the midst of a crisis of faith. A rather serious one. We'd been to Novigrad. Mother had seen the pyres in High Ark Square, uttered not a word on our way home. She had all the holy books, insignias, reliquaries gathered, taken outside and burnt. Then she locked herself in her room. We need to hurry. Hear that? Calm and quiet. All seems to be in order. We should go in, just to be sure. You're relentless, aren't you? Fine. But wait here, please. Mother's certainly not in the mood for guests. Or I'll put a bolt between your eyes. Listen, you got the wrong guy. Save your trickery, taking you to the heiress. <sighs> well, killer's already escaped. Lead the way, hero. We got him, Lady Ingrid. It wasn't easy, but lower that crossbow before you hurt yourself. This man is innocent. Forgive me. I saw him running. Thought it was the killer fleeing. I was chasing him, and I'd have caught him if you hadn't gotten in my way. Out of my sight, at once! Mother! Why did he do this to her? Why? Because she blasphemed the eternal fire, only thing that ties her to the other victims. Ingrid. I know this is a hard time for you, but usually the killer leaves a note on the body. A note indicating his next victim. May I? Very well. 
But you should be on your own. I do not wish to see her in this state. I do not wish to remember her like that. And let her be the last victim. Please. Bruises, broken fingernails. She defended herself. Must be why it took him longer, and why he almost got caught. Here it is. Sweet Nettie, crippled Kate's. Growing bolder, not just the name, but the place too. Won't get away this time. Sweet Nettie, where is she? Upstairs. But she's with a very important client. Do not disturb them. Oh, trust me. I think you're gonna want me to. No one will hear you, bitch. Not a soul. You, though? Whole town will hear you in a minute. Yet again, you disturb me. And I so dislike being disturbed. I was to play with sweet Nettie, render her not so sweet, but I shall see to you first. First, gotta tell me why you do it. For pleasure. Satisfaction. <laughs> Achievable with whores in a lot of ways, many traditional. Doesn't take killing them, trust me. Who said anything about killing? I could stop at a few burns. Third degree, but still. Mm, this rosy skin will roast quite well. Spare me your lies. I've seen your victims, I know how they end. You don't stop, not unless someone gets in your way. Like I'm doing now. What the fuck are you on about? Murder. You killed Fabian Meyer, Patricia Vagelbud, and many others. <laughs> Bollocks. You're mistaken, vagrant. Found a message on Patricia's body. Led me here to crippled Kate's. To sweet Nettie. If you didn't leave it, who did? I don't know. But I see we must talk. Calmly. Who knew you'd be here? Strangely enough, I don't announce these outings far and wide. There's but one man who... That, that's impossible. He treats even corpses with kid gloves. The coroner. Said you were busy, that you wouldn't visit the morgue. Gotta go after him. Go. But to Warehouse 12 at the docks. He's there this time of day, procuring supplies. Formaldehyde. I shall stay here. I've unfinished business with Sweet Nettie. After all, I paid in advance. Then you'll pay again. For her, for all the other women you've tortured. Killer or not, this guy, like, he downright admitted that he kills people just for the pleasure of it. Like he tortures them just for the pleasure of it. You're free now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. If not for you. He asked if I did everything and I said, for the right price, of course. And then he smiled. Oh God, it gave me the shivers. And then he hit me. So hard I passed out. I was bound when I came to. And he was here in the poker, in the fire. <laughs> Calm down. He won't hurt you anymore. He won't hurt anyone. It's like I said, he may not have been, he may not have been the killer, but he tortures women all the time. He tortures people all the time. People that have done nothing wrong. People that are just trying to live their life. 
Now the question now is, why is the coroner doing it? Also, what is he? Because, like, just everything. There's no way he could have pulled all that off with like the the jumping and all that. Also, it would make sense. I mean, he's a coroner, so he would always have a stockpile of formaldehyde. But anyway, maybe we'll find some answers when we go in. Run out of formaldehyde. I underestimated you. You almost caught me in flagrante delicto. Now you've seen through my bluff with Nathaniel. Although, you've not divined all, I see. Had you, you would have drawn your silver sword. Who, what are you? A vampire. Higher, of course. Got a reason for killing? A reason to torture? Hmm. I thought you'd figure that out as well. The symbolism is rather obvious. Coals for those who are blind to the fire. The egg of a salamander born of fire to replace their cold, doubting hearts. Fire down the throat that... Yeah, symbolism's clear. What's not is why a vampire would kill in the name of the eternal fire. Should be equally obvious. I concur with the Church's diagnosis. Novigrad is a fallen city. Its population amnesiacs to the very concepts of decency and morality. So I decided to remind them, in a manner they'd be certain to notice. There are other ways. Could have set up a soapbox in Hierarch Square, preached from it. How funny. That's exactly what I did. But none listened. Instead they laughed, threw stones. Give a thought to my victims. A lecherous woodcarver who'd spend his last copper on whores. An old countess who defiled symbols of the faith. A Trebirates for whom nothing was sacred, nothing above ridicule. They did not deserve to live. But their deaths could be a lesson to others. Awaken them, scare them onto the correct path, the path to the fire, to cleansing, to salvation. For you, I'm afraid it's too late. You are a man of little faith. I sense this. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty good with a sword. Pretty good. Might not. Next chance I get, I really need to try to get some diamond radium bombs. You'd be surprised how effective they are. Well, that and some silver. Some silver dust. Yeah, the seed cloak now. Was that a silver or a steel sword? It's a silver sword. Nah. Eh. That whole plus one eighty five. While now that might not seem like a big. That might seem like a better thing. The sword upgrades itself, therefore it is... I had the wrong sword equipped. Thought some seemed weird. It just seems weird, like, that a vampire would... That a vampire would 
follow the eternal fire of all things. I mean, I've seen vampire. There will be vampires later in the Let's Play, primarily in DLCs, that do that do have like more moral standards and all that, and like are pretty, actually pretty good people. I don't know if any of y'all have ever played Blood and Wine. I mean, I played all the DLC, but it's been a long time since I played Blood and Wine. But the vampires in those. They're good people. Like, they actually try to be good people. And they actually try to help people. But the whole story about Blood and Wine is a sad, sad story. And we will get to it. I plan on doing this game start to finish with DLC included. Now, after the main story of Witcher 3, I might take a break, go on to another game, and then come back with a Heart of Stone. But, until then, we're gonna keep going. Although, I might also just keep continuing with right where I leave off. Like, right after I'm done with the story on this, I, I might move on to Heart of Stone. I mean, I don't see why not. It all depends if depends on how long the uh, let's play series is because this game is a long game and it will take a while to beat so I don't know I probably will depending like I said depending on what happens I might move on to another game after the main story or I might just move on to the DLCs How's better, right? Y yes Did you take care of what I asked? Yeah, the witcher's way. Thank you, Geralt, for me and Priscilla. Did my part. Your turn now. Take care of her. Good care. I will. You'll see. Treat her better than the Dryads of Broccolon could. She's talking again. Nice surprise. Isn't it? Professor Von Gratz told me her wounds are healing faster than a troll's. Not the most flattering comparison, but encouraging. Maybe... She might even sing again someday. For now, we'll try performing as a duo. She'll play the lute, I'll sing. Dandelion and Kalanetta. Got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Sounds great. Good luck, Dandelion. On stage and off. <sighs> and with that, we now end the story in Novigrad. Now, we could move on to Skellige right now, but... As I promised, in the next episode, we will go do the quest for this. It's a pretty interesting quest line, and you do get some... You can get some good stuff from it. Plus, I'm hoping that quest will help me level up a little more. Because before we go to Skellige, which I do still... We do are... We are gonna go there. I still want to go do the quest that I find here. You know, the one to do the uh, quest for to meet the Witcher from the School of the Cat and then get the cat armor and then hopefully get the cat armor made. That's... So yeah, that's going to be the plan for the next episode. We're going to go do... The quest for for the guy here, hope and then hopefully that'll level me up to at least close to level seventy eight. Then we can go do the school of the cat, and then we shall finally move on to Skellige. Now I know some of you are probably wondering why not do why not finish the quest where we take out Radovid. 
Unfortunately, we cannot actually do the rest of that quest yet. You actually have to wait until a certain point. But we will finish it, don't worry, we will. And once we get to Skellige, we'll, we'll still go find out about uh, uh, Lambert's quest with, to find the guy that killed his friend. So yeah, that's going to be the plan for the next episode. So with all that being said, thanks all you so much for watching. If you liked it, subscribe and leave a like. And as always, please leave a comment down below. Because the comments are the only way that I can improve on these. And if you want to chime directly or check out updates on the channel, check my Twitter and Instagram at Antilles Gaming. And with all that being said, I will see all of you in the next episode.